Welcome to Playground Sessions YouTube channel. You can add range down in the left hand, something like this. It's really important that you're able to kind of play within these chord shapes if you really want to bring this stuff to life. This is all about getting started at the piano and realizing that you can actually learn how to play. Yes, I'm talking to you. You pick any key and then go up three half steps to get the final key of the chord. I'll show you what I mean. So let's start on this C. Between me, David Sides, and Theron Brown, and the rest of the Playground Sessions teaching squad, we love the piano, we love sharing our knowledge of music. So again, thanks for joining us. I'll see you guys on the next one. I think we're live. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Playground Sessions YouTube channel. I'm Phil, and today is going to be a really fun hang. I'm going to be giving away some annual memberships to Playground Sessions for free, just for people hanging out and being active in the chat today. More on that to come in just a minute. But I just wanted to say that we're celebrating starting learning the piano. Everyone has started at different times, or maybe you haven't started yet. Uh, but it's never a bad time to start learning the piano. However, it can be a tall order. It can be a big ask if you don't know exactly how to get started or maybe you've tried starting and you've hit a wall or whatever your story might be. That's what we're talking about today. How to start learning the piano successfully. And we're going to go over that in detail today. I'm also going to be taking your guys' questions and comments live. I see some of you already. What's up, Wayne McChesney? Hey, Dipa Yan, what's up? Hey, Jeanette Meats, good to see you. Hey, Kathy Tassado. Chris Carlson in the building, what's up? Strum and Susan, nice. Susan, are you a guitarist? Uh, hopefully you're interested in piano as well, because that's what we're talking about today. Hey, Terry Rasters. You guys, this is going to be a fun one today. I'm going to tell you exactly how the giveaway is going to work today. There's going to be three different winners, um, and we're going to be talking about the uh, the the topic at hand throughout the lesson. We're going to be picking three winners throughout the lesson as well. So if you hang tight with me, uh, get a drink, get a snack, whatever you need, uh, we're going to be hanging for the next hour or so. Also, I should say that if you are already a Playground Sessions member, you can still win and gift your membership to a friend or family member, anyone who you know that may want some help learning the piano. And this could be the boost that they need to, to kick it off for them. If you've been enjoying yourself at the piano, share that gift with them as well. Okay, so anyone can win. Here's how the giveaway is going to work. We're doing membership giveaways. We have a link that we're going to post in the chat. Okay, once that link is posted, I want you guys all to click that link. It's going to take you to a little landing page. You're going to enter your email address, and that's all you need to do. Once you do that, it's going to populate a list on my end. Okay. Uh, I'm going to draw at random from the list of people who have signed up. Now, you guys, if there's only 10 people who click the link, you got a 1 in 10 chance of winning, right? So it's not against everyone watching or everyone who's already a Playground Sessions, you know, subscriber. Just, just being picked from the list of people who sign up through the link today. So let's go ahead and do this now. I'm going to ask Andrew to post the link in the chat right now, and everyone is encouraged to click that link and go sign up. I'm going to spend a few minutes now talking about the overview of today's lesson. And I'm going to give you guys that time to go click that link and sign up and come back. When I'm done going through the lesson overview, I'm going to pick our first winner, OK? So let's see how this goes. I'll pick the second winner down the line in today's lesson. I'll pick the third winner towards the end of today's lesson. Uh, so let's go ahead and get the link posted in the chat. Go ahead and click that when you see it. All right, it looks like the link has been posted. Good. <laughs> Terry Raster says, do we get a prize for being the first to enter our email? Uh, well, I guess you've got, uh, you've got better chances, right, if we, uh, if we pick the winner soon. So that could, be, it could help your, your chances to win the prize. 
Go ahead and do that now, you guys, everyone watching, and I'm going to just talk through an overview of today's lesson. I'll pick our first winner when I'm done. So today's lesson is about how to get started learning the piano successfully. Now, I add successfully because you can start learning the piano and then quit the next day, right, or the next month. Successfully means how can you set yourself up for the long term? to start learning piano and set yourself up so that you can really progress over time and not get burnt out or not feel negative or many of the other reasons, right? Uh, so we're going to talk about, first off, your mindset. How do you get into the right mindset for learning the piano? And I'm going to tell you guys in detail what I mean by that. Uh, but it starts there. It starts here, right? With your expectations, with your goals, with your desires. Uh, from there, I want to talk about some of the prerequisites we may need to get started successfully at the piano. You can start learning piano, but if you don't have anything to practice it on, you can only go so far, right? So we need to figure out what kind of equipment might we need and what some equipment that is nice but is not actually needed to start. Okay, we'll talk about that. Uh, we'll also talk about a practice space, right? We want to make sure we have a space dedicated to this if we want to be a long-term piano student and really get good. From there, we'll talk about how to actually practice. Now, that might seem like an obvious thing, but once you sit down and try it yourself, it is not, <laughs> it can be a big, wide open ended thing, and it can be difficult to navigate. How do you actually practice well? How do you practice in a productive way? How do you practice and build muscle memory? How do you, all of that stuff, right? So, we'll talk about that as well. And then I want to kind of end things today by talking about just some of the basic main pillars or main fundamentals um, to music, right? So once you've got your setup, your mindset, and your, uh, you know, sort of your how to practice, we'll get into what to practice, okay? And we're not going to spend a ton of time on that today, but that gets us from the very beginning thought of, I want to learn piano, all the way up to, now I have a keyboard, now I'm practicing, what should I practice, okay? That's our topic for today. But I'd like to now get back to the chat. Give me one second. It looks like Art Hound Studio says, I'm legit shaking. <laughs> this person really wants to win. Jeanette clicked the link. Strum okay, awesome, you guys. So I see some people already doing this. By the way, we pick our first winner. There's still two more winners to go, okay? If you've entered your name already and you don't win the first uh, announcement, the first uh, prize, you will still be in the running for the second and third prize as well. I also should say, if you're joining late and you missed the first winner uh, announcement, you can click on the link at any time and still jump in for a chance to win the second or the third, okay? All right, everyone, drum roll, please. See if I can do a drum roll on the piano. Nope. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm looking here. I see our very first winner. You guys ready? Winner number one is Sylvia Dyson. Woo! Congratulations, Sylvia. You are our first winner. You have just won a free annual membership to Playground Sessions. Now, using the email that you, uh, that you joined our list with, we're going to email you uh, with instructions for how to set up your account. Expect to hear from us shortly. It may be tomorrow, but uh, we're going to come at you very soon with steps for how to redeem, okay? This is exciting. Good work. Now, again, there's two more chances to win, so stick with me, guys. We're going to do another drawing in maybe another 15 minutes or so, and we'll do the third one another 15 from then. All right. Great work. Okay, so you guys, let's talk about starting to learn the piano. We're going to take it back to the beginning, the, the seed. When the seed is planted, I want to learn piano. We're going to start talking about that, the mindset. Get that in your heads. Mindset is so crucial here. To me, mindset means the set of attitudes or beliefs that I have about a certain thing. Okay, So if I'm in the mindset that I'm actually going to become a piano player, Part of that mindset means that I am committing to a long-term journey. I can't stress that enough, okay? We live in an age where everything is so immediate and readily available and quick, right? 
we can't really take any shortcuts here. We really want to be able to understand this instrument and have control over this instrument and, and play it in a way that we feel good about. There's no shortcut, right? So part of this is to set your expectations. And this doesn't have to be a negative thing. I think it's actually a positive thing. I want to put work into something and see results over time. And I really want to get better at something. Knowing that it actually is a journey makes me feel like it's going to be worth doing, right? Sometimes you see headlines and things like, oh, learn 500 songs in five minutes or like some kind of an outlandish promise to get you to try and play. And it's setting you up to have the wrong expectation. I believe it sets you up to fail. So what we like to do here at Playground is we're not going to overpromise and say, this stuff is so easy if you just use us. Instead, what we want to say is, guys, this is a journey where we're going to learn, but we can do it together and it can be fun along the way. So mindset is important. You got to set your expectations about what it is that you're, you're embarking on, right? Uh, another part of mindset is goals. So once you understand what you're getting into here, then it's a it's really important that you set some goals for your piano journey. Now, it may not be things like, in one year from now, I want to be a master at this song or at this scale or this key. Uh, it's, hard to, it's hard to make goals like that in the very beginning when you don't really understand the stuff yet. Instead, I would really, really encourage you to make goals about your commitment, about your practice, about clocking in. I'm gonna practice at least once a week for the entire next year, for example. That's a great goal. That's something that you can work against and hold yourself accountable to. You might also have a goal of, you know, uh, maybe less tied to a time period, but you might say, my goal is to practice until I'm able to jam with my friend Susan on the guitar, Strum and Susan. Uh, things like that, right? Instead of just jumping in cold and saying, okay, I got a keyboard, here we go. Uh, it's really important to structure your, your journey, especially in the beginning, okay? Have a goal that you can always remind yourself of and lean back on. If you don't have, if you don't care at all about being able to read sheet music, then you shouldn't set a goal for yourself to sight read during your practice. It's just not gonna be working towards your goal. If your goal is to be able to improvise, you don't really need to spend that much time reading classical music, for example. Uh, you may wanna study certain theory and scales and chords so you know how to improvise and then of course you want to practice improvising you see what i'm saying your goal up front should be the thing that you anchor all of your your future practicing around make sure it's laddering up to your goal uh you know so that's kind of it for mindset we need to just level set get our expectations right uh and we need to set some goals okay so that's number one I hope any of you who are starting or have recently started at the piano i hope you've done that and if not it's not too late Try it now, try it tomorrow, uh, and then see if that, if that helps you in your journey along the way, okay? Now, the next thing I want to talk about here, about getting started at the piano, is going to be what I'll call prerequisites, okay? Now, that's a term that basically means what is required of you before you start, right? So, mindset's part of that, but we're past that now. What do we actually need to successfully start to learn the piano? Well, you need one of these guys, right? Keyboard, piano, right? Whatever you got. If you've got a grand piano, I'm jealous. If you have a keyboard already, you're good. If you don't, you need to consider getting a keyboard, okay? Now, this is a big topic. We could have a whole lesson on just keyboards and what keyboard should I buy. Um, but the main thing I want to get across to you today is that you have to have some sort of an instrument to practice on, yes. So you need to make an investment. However, it does not have to be a gigantic investment. The keyboard or piano you get in the beginning does not correlate to how serious you are at, at learning the piano. In other words, if I really want to learn piano and I get a $100,000 piano, it doesn't mean I'm going to do any better or stick with it any longer than I would if I just got a $100 keyboard, okay? In fact, in some cases, I might actually encourage you to not overinvest in the beginning, right? You, you want to feel like you have a tool in front of you that you, challenges you and that you can practice on. In the beginning, you don't need 88 keys. Sorry. 
I mean, it's cool to sit in front of 88 key keyboard and everything, but you're really working on the main MIDI area in the middle here, right? So a shorter keyboard, 76 key, 61 key even. Uh, the vast majority of the arrangements in the Playground Sessions interactive app, by the way, including the advanced arrangements, can all be played on a 61 key keyboard. And that was intentional because we do sell a Playground Sessions keyboard as well, by the way, 61 keys. Uh, but my point is even a shorter keyboard is going to allow you to practice in the beginning. So if you're strapped for cash, but you really want to jump in, get something you can practice on, but you don't need all the bells and whistles. And in fact, what I'd like to do is sent to a little clip of a video that I've done uh, over the last few months. For those who are new to the channel, uh, I'm Phil. There's also Theron Brown and David Sides. We're the Playground Sessions teachers, and we try and come out with content all the time here on YouTube, trying different things. Uh, one thing I like to do is answer questions or comments that are left on our YouTube videos that maybe get uh, left behind or slip through the cracks, right? So I'll go through our videos, find questions, and I'll, I'll try and answer them in what I call Q&A videos. So I'm going to send to a clip now. Uh, but during this clip, I'm going to encourage you guys again to sign up for this, uh, click this link and sign up for this giveaway. We're about to get into our second winner already here, guys. So uh, I'm going to send to a clip that, that answers a, a question about keyboards. So you're going to hear me get into a little bit more detail about what you need and what you maybe don't need for your starter keyboard. While that clip is playing, I'm going to encourage you guys, let's get the link in the chat again. Click that link, sign up. On the other side of this clip, I think we're going to be ready to announce winner number two. I'll see you guys over there. Here's a question from Rosaro Fan 624 What's up? I don't know if anyone noted this yet, but it actually does matter what keyboard you're using. If you're using a digital keyboard, make absolute certain that the keys are weighted. If they aren't, the touch of an acoustic piano will be completely different compared to a digital without weighted keys. Weighted keys develop finger strength, while non-weighted keys do not. Okay, great point, Rosaro Fan 624 Okay, so when you're looking for a new keyboard, there's a couple of things you want to keep in mind. One is, how serious are you about learning the piano? You don't have to go get the best, nicest keyboard that's going to last forever if you're not sure yet, if you're just testing out the waters, for example. So keep budget in mind, of course. You also want to think about range. Do you need 88 keys? Now, that's a full-size keyboard. That's a full-size piano as well, 88 keys. But as I mentioned earlier, the vast majority of songs in our app can be played on a 61 key keyboard. I also have a 73 key keyboard that I really like. So range is something to be considered, but you don't necessarily need the full width of the full 88 key keyboard to learn how to play and to learn a significant amount at that. Now, the next thing you want to consider, as Rosaro Fan 624 has pointed out, how weighted are the keys? Are they fully weighted? Are they semi-weighted? Are they not weighted keys? Now, where I will disagree with the commenter here is that they have to be fully weighted. I think if your goal is to become a, a really, really good pianist who's playing on acoustic pianos and who is in full command of their dynamic control, maybe you're talking about performing in a recital or becoming a professional pianist. If that's the path for you, that's cool. And of course, you're going to want to be practicing all of the subtle techniques that go into mastering the touch of the acoustic piano and included in that is the weighted keys of course but for the majority of us who are learning as a hobby or who want to play for fun i will tell you that weighted keys are not something that should be a make or break in your decision especially because as keys get more and more authentic as keyboards get more and more bells and whistles the price is going to go up so if you're not sure about your commitment to the keyboard and you want to dip a toe in the water or even a foot, I don't think you need fully weighted keys. I think you will be better in the end if you stick with piano in the long term if you've practiced with weighted keys. But it's just consideration, just like range and budget when you're looking for what's right for you. So first check with yourself, what are your goals and how serious are you at this stage? Then you want to pick a keyboard that fits that accordingly. And to wrap things up, I'll steer you guys over to our website where you can buy different keyboard bundles that come with the Playground Sessions interactive app at significant discounts. 
You can buy keyboards beyond just our PG-150 as well. So whatever your price range is, whatever your goals are for the piano, I encourage you to start looking on our site because you can find something that's right and it comes with the interactive subscription. So if you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up for me, please. And if you wanna see more from Playground Sessions YouTube, you gotta hit subscribe. Crossing hands is, is a fun thing, but I wouldn't recommend doing that in, early in your journey. Uh, welcome back, you guys. I hope that helped in terms of what kind of keyboard to look for. Um, also, I hope that encouraged you guys to comment on any video that you see. Uh, I don't guarantee that I'm going to get to but I do videos like the Q&A video you just saw a clip from. Uh, I'm going to try to do those pretty regularly, so uh, yeah, I'm always perusing the comments here. All right, guys. Uh, speaking of perusing, what's up, Spike Hawk? What's up? Uh, who else we got in the... I love books to read. What's up? Hey, Randy Boardman. Charles Smith. What's up? Hey, Kevin Graham. PG-150 here. Nice, nice. Hey, Sandra Butler Roberts. What's up? Oh, I can't even keep up with the chat. You guys are awesome. No sound. Ah, here we go. I think we're back. All right. So, uh, you just watched me cross hands like this with no audio. Okay. <laughs> all right, good. So now that we're all good and you can hear me, I think it's time to pick our second winner, you guys. So we've got some more entries. Thank you so much. Let me, let me pick the second winner now. You guys ready? Okay, it looks like our second winner. Please excuse me if I mispronounce your name. Dipayan Ghosh. You are our second winner. And that, of course, means you won a free year-long membership to Playground Sessions. No strings attached. Uh, and you are uh, going to get an email here probably in the next 24 hours or so uh, that's going to tell you how to redeem. So congratulations. Deepayan Ghosh. And please let me know if I've mispronounced your name. Let me know, and I'll correct it. Congratulations. This is fun, you guys. We've got one more winner to announce. Uh, and we're going to do it at the end of this lesson, okay? So stick around. By the way, that third winner is going to be what we like to call a grand prize winner, okay? I like to do one of these. <laughs> grand prize winner means you get the same thing, annual membership to Playground Sessions. And we're also going to gift you a $100 gift card to Amazon. Uh, obviously, we can't control what you get with that, but we uh, encourage you to use it to help you on your piano journey, whatever that might look like. Could go towards the cost of a keyboard, could go towards the cost of, you know, a desk for your keyboard or a music stand or anything that you think would help would help you along the way. We want to help, okay? So congratulations to our first two winners. Third winner is going to be the grand prize winner. If you have entered into the challenge, uh, excuse me, into the uh, the contest already and you haven't won yet, you're still in the running. Uh, but if you haven't entered yet, you can enter now and still also be in the running for that grand prize. So let's keep things moving, you guys. Uh, congrats again to our first two winners. <sighs> so we talked about how to get started at the piano successfully. We talked about how it all starts with the mindset, setting expectations, setting goals. Um, committing to this journey. Then we talked about what are some prerequisites you need, right? Mostly a keyboard if you don't have one, but also it's nice to have a space that's dedicated to this, even if it's just a wall or a corner of a room. Um, the chances of the keyboard just kind of disappearing under the bed or in the closet are, are much less if you actually have a space where the keyboard is always set up. So we talked about that stuff. Now what I'd like to get into is how to practice. Now this is a big one. Uh, in fact, we've done some recent live stream lessons on this exact topic already, how to practice productively. Uh, so I encourage everyone here, by the way, to, to subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already, and go peruse what we've got, right? Because all the live lessons that we do are archived in a playlist. All the Q&A videos archived, all the tutorials, everything. 
You can find a lot of good stuff in there, even if you're not watching it live live. If you replay it, you can still get some good value out of it, we hope. So the next thing I want to talk about is how to practice. And let's frame this up in today's world of you've just gotten started at, at learning the piano. So you have your mindset. You have your space. You have your keyboard. Now what? How do you practice? Okay. Let's talk about this. So to me, a practice session sounds like a singular thing. I'm going to go practice. But one practice session is actually made up of a couple of different things, okay? And it's important that we, we understand this. Um, first, you've got to carve out time. And you may know how much time you have to give, typically. Oh, I got, I got an hour, so I'm going to try to get 45 minutes of practicing in. Or, oh, I only got 10 minutes. I'm going to try to get 10 minutes of practicing in. So typically, framing it up with a time goal is, is smart. And it's just practical. But then when you have that time... For round numbers, let's say 30 minutes. I got 30 minutes to practice. Well, what are you actually going to be practicing? Okay, That's going to depend, of course, on where you're at and what your goals are. But what I want to focus on now is how to structure that 30 minutes in a way that will keep you engaged, keep you uh, motivated, and keep you having fun at the instrument, as well as, of course, practicing and challenging yourself and progressing. Right? That's a, That's a given. Um, so here's what I like to do. I got 30 minutes to practice, let's say. And let's say my practice goal for the day is to work on major scales. I'm just going to make this up. Okay. So instead of practicing my major scales for 30 minutes straight, I mean, that sounds like painful to me. Even I've been playing piano my whole life. Maybe that's not why I'm a classical performer, but I, uh, I don't really think that 30 minutes of challenging scale practice is going to be very fulfilling to my soul, uh, although it might get me better as a, as a technician at the piano. So what I like to do is try and balance the thing that I know I should practice to get better with things that I know I just enjoy, even if they're not going to get me better. And that's so important because we have to balance the work with the play. I'm a firm believer in that. In the short term, you could argue that you don't get as much real practice in if you're, if you're also balancing it with fun time. But I stand by this. In the long term, I promise your chances of staying with the piano in the long term are so much higher if you remind yourself regularly that there's joy and fun to be had here too. I hope that makes sense. So if we got 30 minutes to play, I might spend the first five minutes of my practice session just doing something that I really love to do. It might have nothing to do with my practice goals. So me personally, I like to improvise. Uh, I like to make up music uh, as I go. And it might sound like a contradiction. How do you practice making stuff up on the fly? But really, you practice it by doing it uh, and then kind of reacting to what you did. So I just do that to start. All right? I'll just... I might just do that for a few minutes. It kind of is meditative for me, and it helps me kind of get into the zone mentally and physically to be able to really start practicing what I need to practice, okay? So I might do that for five minutes and then get to the meat of my practicing. I'm not going to do this for 20 minutes live, but I would, uh, I would do that a bit. And then if I start to get bored, maybe 10 minutes in, I might go up an octave might spread out my hands and I might try and just tweak this exercise in small ways to keep me mentally engaged to keep my attention strong okay but still what I'm doing in my hands and fingers is practicing my scales that was my practice goal so I might do that for let's say 20 minutes now I've spent five minutes warming up and having some fun at the piano then I spent 20 minutes working now I've got five minutes left I'm going to try and round it out, kind of like how I started it. So I warmed up with something fun. 
I'm going to cool down with something fun as well. Now, for me, it might be just to improvise for another five minutes, or I might try and even put some structure on my improvised uh, practicing. Like maybe I'll try and improvise where my left hand is playing melodic stuff, my right hand is playing harmony stuff. Whatever, right? Uh, but either way, the important thing to remember here is that in the, the warm-up and the cool-down, have fun with it. Don't put so many rules on it that it becomes a challenge that you have to try to get right. <laughs> we got enough of that in the meat of our practice. The beginning and the end should be something that's fun, something that reminds you that this is fun and that you can feel joy by doing it. I cannot stress how important that is in the long term on your piano journey, okay? I'm going to pop into the chat real quick. Jill Engert, what's up? Hey, Barbara Fazio, you made it. Kojawea? I might be saying your name wrong. I apologize. Thanks for joining. Uh, any advice on, on how to avoid forearm achiness when playing chords? I'm just getting into those on my left hand forearm. Get tired quickly. Yep. Thanks for the question here. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, I'll be quick here because I know this is more of an intermediate question, not so much of, of a beginner question. But, but still, how to practice without tension is something we all should be thinking about. When you say achy forearms, I know that that means that you're likely playing with some muscle tension and that that tension can then produce some pain, right, some aches. So this is something we constantly have to think about as pianists, day one or even advanced pianists. We need to make sure that we're relaxed and flowy and not too tense shoulders or neck or forearms or elbows or wrists. You've got to try and relax and roll it out. Now, it's easier said than done, right? Once you go to play a chord, if that chord is a challenging chord, you may have to bend your hand and fingers in a certain way to achieve that, that chord shape. Uh, what I'll tell you is this, without knowing the exact passage or chord that you're looking at. What I'll say is, Sometimes you've got to stretch your fingers and hand, but there are other parts of your physical mechanism here that don't need to be strained. But too often, when we have to stretch our hand or bend our wrist, our whole arm follows suit. And then the challenge becomes, how do I play this awkward chord, but to remain loose in my shoulder and elbow and forearm? You may have to stretch your hands or fingers, but at least let's try and not have unnecessary tension. That's the key word. Because sometimes in order to play something, you have to stretch a little bit. You have to have a little tension. The goal should always be to eliminate as much tension as possible. Okay, And to do that, sometimes you just have to isolate the chord shape. I'm going to make up a chord. Let's say it's this one here. This is one of my favorite jazz chords. Maybe we can go to the overhead shot for this. And, you know, it's a little bit awkward for a few reasons. One is our We've got some black and white key combos. We've got some weird intervals going on. Our middle finger is playing in between two black keys pretty high up on the key, which if your hands are like mine, you may accidentally play some, some adjacent black keys without meaning to. So if you notice my pinky's straight, my middle finger is very bent, and my thumb is kind of sticking out at a different angle here. This is just one example, but what I would do is isolate that chord and then just try building it from one note at a time. So let your hand fall loose, completely limp and relaxed, right in the middle of that chord shape. And then just add the, the bottom note. And notice I'm literally like laying my hand on the keys, okay? I wanna keep it as relaxed as possible. Now I'm gonna just like limp, just lay my hand across on the second one. And here's where some of you, depending on your hand size, might feel some tension in here. So wiggle it around a little bit, see how it feels. If you bend your arm this way and you slide your pinky back a bit, you can actually do this with a more relaxed wrist. If your arm, forearm and wrist are coming from this way, you might start to notice your pinky is flying out to the left, right? And that's where you're gonna see some tension here, here, and definitely in here as well, here even. As Soon as I rotate this way, my wrist is at a much more natural angle and I don't have as much tension in my pinky there. Then what I'll do is I'll forget the bottom note for a second. I'll do the same thing I did before, but just with the top two notes. So completely limp hand, 
let it fall. That's very natural, right? That part's easy. So we know that the challenge here is not here, and it's also not really here. The challenge is here. And so what I'm doing here is basically just dissecting this chord shape. I'm breaking it down to its basic individual three notes and the fingers we use to play them. And I'm just trying to find physically where it feels the best. I'm trying to avoid unnecessary tension in the areas that don't need to be strained, right? Now, obviously, that's a quick answer for a big topic, and it, it's gonna, my answer is going to change depending on what kind of chord we're talking about, what level you're at, and all that. But thank you for the question, and, and uh, I think it's a, a great one to be thinking about at all levels. How do we play in a way that is natural and relaxed? That's it. All right. I can't even keep up with the chat, you guys. This is cool. It's a good, it's a problem, but it's a good problem. Okay, so the next giveaway, we are going to cover one more topic here, uh, one more chapter, let's say, of this topic today, and then we're going to do uh, the final announcement. I say give it another five to ten minutes, uh, Art. Uh, all right. Oh, sweet child of mine. Hey, Art. <laughs> I see you. Got a little distracted there. That was for you, Art, Art Hound Studio. All right, so let's wrap up this topic today, you guys. We talked about headspace, mindset, right? We talked about prerequisites. We talked about how to practice. Now, this last topic is going to be more of like a preview and a send-off, okay? We're not going to get into all the details of music theory and rhythm and harmony and melody, but I do want to talk to you guys to just get you grounded in some of these terms because this is the fundamentals, all right? Music fundamentals. When you talk about how to practice, I already told you, it depends on what you're practicing, all right? So to be fair, we got to cover this too. The main building blocks here in music, and this goes beyond the piano, but we'll, we'll focus it on the piano. Melody, harmony, rhythm, um, technique, right? Like we were just talking a lot about technique, how to play uh, more relaxed, uh, there's also things like dynamics and touch and control that falls under technique. Uh, if I'm practicing scales, it's likely to practice my technique. I want to be able to play fast and loose. That's all technique related. And then, of course, there's music theory. Theory is kind of like the, the rules of why music works the way that it does. Um, we might know that this sounds like Sweet Child of Mine, but what key is it in? What chord progression are we using? Is it major or minor? Is it... What time signature is it in? That's all theory stuff, okay? Um, and it might sound like a lot, but guys, that's it. That like covers everything. Melody, harmony, rhythm, technique, and theory, okay? So when you're setting your goals up front and you're getting your mindset right, you should anchor your goals in one or a few of these kind of elements. Um, and they may change from song to song. Uh, or from practice session to practice session. But we want we want to just, at least for now, be aware of what these things are, okay? So melody, uh, when, if there's ever a song that has lyrics, that's what the singer's singing, right? The melody. Uh, you know if you've been a Playground Session subscriber for a while, you know that our arrangements contain the melody. We call them solo piano arrangements. They're the full song uh, with the vocal melody in the piano part. Okay, so the melody doesn't have to be voice. The melody is the, the main theme of a piece. Uh, if we're playing for Elise, the melody is not this. The melody is. The main theme, right? Uh, the part you would sing if there were words. Now, harmony. Technically, the definition would, I think, just be more than one note played at a time. Um, but in practical sense, harmony are, are chords. Harmony is what supports the melody and makes the melody sound the way that the composer wants the, it to sound. Harmony fills in the quality of the chord. Is it major, minor? Um, harmony can add range, low harmony. Or it could be really high. 
We could even have harmony uh, higher than the melody if we want. Right? So harmony can add range, texture, uh, and support for the melody. Rhythm is the way that we play melody and harmony over time. Okay? Do we just hold it? Or do we play? Or do we go? Just making up some rhythms there, but rhythm is kind of the the dancey, pulsing kind of approach to playing melody and harmony, right? When we, when we combine all three, we got a song, all right? Uh, so important to know that stuff. From there, we get into technique, and this is really going to help shape your practice sessions. Um, if it's important to you that you become the best technician, the best piano player with the best technique, then there are a set of things that you need to practice every single time you practice. If you want to be the most expressive player, then there's a set of things to, to practice. If you want to be the best improvising player, then there's a set of things to practice. Um, by the way, expression meaning uh, bringing the music to life, adding your own touch to it, pushing and pulling the tempo a little bit, um, bringing the dynamic level up and down. All that is related to technique and control. Uh, and finally, um, Art, I'm gonna, I see your question here. I'm going to get to you here. You're saying, can I still win if I'm not here to watch? The answer is yes. Sorry, you got to go. Uh, so feel free to check back later. Um, and uh, yeah, if we call your name, you win. Uh, so sorry, you got to go. I'll see you next time. Thanks, Art. Um, how are we doing here? I think let's, uh, let's go ahead and shift into, into prize number three. Art, if you're still around, hang tight for a second. Uh, and then I'm going to hang in the chat a little longer with you guys and answer some of the questions that I'm seeing here, okay? Uh, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to ask for that link to be posted one more time in the chat. Andrew, please hit it. Uh, Andrew will post that link one more time. It's the same link as before. If you have already signed up and you haven't won, just sit tight. You don't need to sign up again, and then you can still win. So hang tight. For those who just joined, go ahead and click that link, sign up. I'm going to play a little bit of another clip here. I want to show you guys something fun that my band did. This probably was a year ago at this point. Um, you'll see we were wearing masks, and uh, we got together for a live stream where we played as a trio. And I talked a little bit about kind of how to play in a band setting versus uh, just playing alone. Well, here's a clip from that. It's my, my trio playing a Beatles classic called Come Together. Go ahead and click that link. Sign up if you haven't yet. On the other side of this clip, we're going to announce winner number three. By the way, grand prize winner, right? All right, enjoy. Come together, and I'll see you guys in just a few.
So, what do you guys think? That was my band, Matthew Dierbertus on the bass, Holbrook Riles the third on the drums, a couple of Akron boys, just like me, uh, in Akron, Ohio. Um, anyways, that was Come Together. That was a fun one to do. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. Now it's time to pick winner number three. By the way, guys, this is grand prize winner. <laughs> grand prize winner means you also get a free playground membership for the whole year, but you also get a $100 Amazon gift card on us to contribute towards your the costs of your musical journey, all right? Strum and Susan, you're in Akron. Oh, you're in Ohio too? Man, there are a lot of Ohioans in these in these uh, chats, Barbara Fazio, I think it was Jen, I forget Jen's last name. There's a bunch of Clevelanders, it's so cool. Um, so welcome to the club, Strum and Susan. Yeah, we're from, I'm in Akron right now. This is our Akron studio. Uh, Playground Sessions is based in New York, but this is the Akron satellite, let's say. Okay, here we go guys, drum roll please. Our grand prize winner is Cynthia Hovis. Woo! <laughs> Cynthia Hovis, congratulations. You are the grand prize winner. And as just like with the last two winners, uh, we're going to email you uh, very soon here with Steps to Redeem and get playing. This is so exciting, you guys. Thank you. Congratulations to Sylvia Dyson, to Dipayan Ghosh, and to Cynthia Hovis. This is really, really fun. You guys... If you enjoyed the stream, even if you didn't win, by the way, uh, if you want to try and do something like this again in the future, let me know here in the chat. This was us trying something new with this type of giveaway format, and um, I'm really excited to see all the activity in the chat today. Uh, so thank you guys for participating. This was super fun. I also hope that the topic we went over today uh, was helpful for you guys. It can be daunting to start something so big as learn the piano. What does that even mean? That's so, that could be a, a lifelong journey, or at least a couple years. What, what, how, where, where am I going to perform? Who am I going to play with? How do I even start? We're trying to make it easier for you guys to start. We want to get you over that first hurdle, okay? And uh, I hope that this helped. I'll see you guys in the Facebook community weekly. I've been going live, checking in uh, every Wednesday. On YouTube here, we're doing these lives now once a month. If you are not a part of the Facebook community, I highly encourage you, Playground Sessions community. It's a very active group of students and teachers as well. Uh, people are sharing progress videos, commenting on each other's you know, uh, posts. It, it's so cool to see people are requesting songs. It's just a fun community, so please try and join that if you haven't yet. And I will see you guys on the next uh, live stream. Make sure, of course, to, to uh, subscribe to the channel here as well. Uh, and le again, let me know if you want to see more videos like this, more campaigns like this. Thanks so much, you guys. I'm going to play a little bit here and, uh, and wrap things up. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. I'm Phil. Don't forget to hit subscribe and tap that notification bell. And be sure to check out the Playground Sessions interactive app. It was co created by music legend Quincy Jones. Playground teaches the piano with interactive feedback and gaming features, all while using your favorite songs. 